So I know that we went a little bit deep and wide in the last video. So let's just do a quick, uh, a very quick recap again from our previous video on types of threading tool. And then we'll look into some of the practical measures on how we apply that to today's, um, to today's environment, right? So uh, the first thing here that I've made things a little bit more simple is I've got a little, obviously a little triangle here in front of us. Um, and let's just call this our threat intelligence triangle and covering off some of the content from our last video, we've got our tactical measures, we have our strategic measures, and then we have our operational. And these are the, these are the elements that make up our threat, uh, our types of threat intelligence um, across our triangle here. So when we talk about tactical, three key areas, we've got our IOCs, so indicators of compromise, we have our TTPs, and then we have our feeds, right? So anytime we talk about tactical, think in terms of technical understanding or technical findings, right? The breadcrumbs that typically get left behind after an attack, these are things that we can then use to elevate and to understand basically future types of attacks, right? Are these certain IP addresses? Are they coming from a range of different IP addresses? Where are they coming from? Uh, domain names, if they're spinning up duplicate or you know, domain names in this instance to conduct phishing or, you know, conduct other types of attacks, um, specific file hashes, if they're passing around information or they're trying to maybe file share specific attacks. Um, so we will take those ISCs and then we can have them uh, and obviously understand them for, for future, obviously for future references. So our TTPs on their next hand are basically the, the signature moves, right? These are our tactical procedures. These are the signature or like the methodology that that specific group or person will, you know, will use. So for myself or a team, you know, we all would have a different or our preferred methodology on the way we perform, you know, certain enumeration or certain attack paths, um, you know, for, for this specific attack or this specific tactical framework, it all comes down into, well, how do they like to do it? Now, how do we like to gain privilege escalation? How do we like to gain initial access? How do we like to you know, pivot sort of networks? How do we like to gain access to the application front? You know, these are all sort of questions that we can then profile and really drive down, you know, are there certain tool sets? Are there certain features or functions that they like to use? Um, do they prefer one method over another? You know, is there a specific malware maybe that's associated with a specific group that it's targeting a certain industry? And if so, you can drill down and start to gain a more of a, more of an understanding. So that's our TTPs, and finally we've got our feeds. So we can take those IOCs and then we can input them into our security controls, whether it's our SOAR platforms, uh, obviously orchestration and response. We've got our SIEMs, we've got our endpoints, we've got our UTMs if we're running, you know, UTM firewalls, IPSs, things like that. So they're the feeds that then we can introduce into our environment to then be on the lookout for those types of attacks. Um, when we talk about strategic, uh, I might just clean it up here and just actually what I might do, just leave it. Um, in terms of strategic, just think in terms of the who and the why, right? And this always comes down to risk. So risk management, risk analysis. So when we talk about who and why, think about this in terms of are we a target? Does this apply to our organization? Does this apply to our industry that we're operating in? What are the strategic measures that potentially apply but help us identify what they are so we can implement certain controls, right? So if it is after, if it's a specific APT group that's known to go after this specific audience or this specific industry, then how do we begin to prepare for them so then we can put that into our defenses? So it's all about the strategic measures, the strategic operations, the strategic initiatives that provides that obviously the, the referencing of those threats and the attacks. So we can take historical data or historical attacks that have happened and then begin to prepare for them for future references. So obviously, again, if they're impacting certain industries or certain countries, then that can go into our, uh, if, into our defense playbooks. So, and that obviously all comes down into risk. So how we're gonna handle that risks, are we likely to be attacked? And if yes, we are, then do we have the data and obviously the infrastructure to support that uh, and why and why not? So you're always thinking in terms of who and the why. Um, and then this obviously ties back into the business as well. So 
think of that in terms of the business is now going to be operating into new territory. Are we familiar with that territory? And if we do expand or if we do acquire that business in that certain industry, does that now open us up to a potential attack? And if so, why? And then you sort of start drilling down into you know, those proactive measures to ensure that things get implemented correctly. That obviously can also enable the business for growth. Now for operational, uh, anytime we talk about operational, um, operational, tactical, and you know, our strategic measures. Think of this in terms of the how and where. So again, you've got who and why. Then we've got our how and where, and then we have our tactical measures. So as you can see, it all sort of plays into each other quite coherently. Operational again, it's basically outlines and documentation approaches into how these attacks get carried out, right? So how were they doing it? Um, how do they gain that initial access? Now you can look at the Lockheed and Martin kill chain. It can start profiling certain parts of that kill chain. Again, MITRE framework is a very good example of this. You've got the initial, you know, initial access, privilege escalation, credential dumping, everything like that. So you can start looking at each of those areas and start understanding, well, how did they do this? Is it maybe three or four things that this APT group is using, but they're not using another three or four elements part of that actual kill chain? So then you want to cut it off at the knee. So once you've identified the, the how, then we can move over into the where, right? So where are these attacks coming from? Um, you know, and then you start really peeling or start, I guess, identifying, you know, what actually is this structure from N10? You can start sort of profiling that, right? And that's usually coming down into, you know, uh, things like we mentioned before, right? Like if it's geopolitical, there may be some sort of geopolitical factors there that are impacting that business as we expand into new territory um, and the list goes on. So these are typically, you know, the, um, you know, the, the how and the where in, in terms of that scenario. So let me just clean that up. But the where and the how. So nice and quick. Um, so that's pretty much it in terms of our operational, our tactical, and our strategic measures across threat intelligence. Now, if I could just kind of scroll up a little bit, we've got, well, what's the next steps from here? And how do we apply this into uh, our organizations? What are some of the things the industry is doing? Um, and, you know, what are pretty much the next steps from, you know, after we've done all our tactical, strategic and operational understanding? Well, there's two main areas from here, right? The first part is threat hunting. And, you know, for many of you, you may already know, and, you know, organizations that do this very well there are great vendors out there who are doing threat hunting um, and this is where you employ or you have a group of internal threat hunters potentially or you've got an outsource to a service provider and they're proactively looking for these things in the environment so you have an industry you have a threat profile based on this industry as known as potential attacks and it's highly and highly proactive in terms of you may have 10, 20, 30, 100 different people that are constantly threat hunting to identify potential IOCs. You know, basically, again, what we talked about before. So our, our, our IOCs, our TTPs, uh, and we're not waiting for things to, you know, to go off. So we're not being reactive in that sense. We're being highly proactive across that environment. And the other part of that is when we do threat emulation, so anytime we do uh, adversarial sims, you can call it adversarial simulation or threat emulation. This is basically where we're fine tuning certain controls. So this is your, you can call this your attack simulation. And everything is great on paper, but then once you start playing it in the field and start understanding that the certain processes or a certain procedure looks a certain way, but it's not reflective that way with your technical controls, then this is where it all sort of breaks down. And, and going back to, I guess the, the upside down triangle that I had last time, where we've got our threat emulation happening down here, and then we have our pen testing happening down here, and then we have our Vaughn, Vaughn management happening up here. And this is the usual approach, right? So Vaughn management is typically the first thing that we're doing across the infrastructure, across our assets, across our hardware and infrastructure, and all that sort of things. And then you can go into your pen testing, you can do more aggressive assessments across domain, external, cloud, users, things like that. Then once you get to this really finical point down here, when you're doing specific threat emulation, you may be targeting a specific TT, you know, a specific tactic or a certain procedure. And then you're basically testing that control with 
um, you know, with essentially the customer in that sense. So, you know, if it's if we're talking about red and blue teaming, so you know, you've got your red and you've got your blue team, you know, the red is obviously going to try and go around the controls while the blue is sort of, you know, defending or preventing those sort of attacks. And these sort of go hand in hand when you're sort of doing them because you want to go as hard as possible with your red team and obviously making sure that the defensive side of things, that the sensors are all aligning, certain escalations are happening, certain people are responding to those threats um, and obviously define it that it's working currently and obviously tune it up if you, you know, if it's not. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. In the next video, we're going to dive a little bit deeper. I hope this has been informative and obviously I'll see you in the next video.